This is Trey Smith of God in a Nutshell, and at the point that I'm making this video, well, within the course of this past week, Julian Assange has been arrested. They were calling him the homeless Santa in the Ecuadorian embassy where he's been staying for about the last six or seven years. Where a lot of people are speculating a lot of different things over this. Of course, one of the, the large fears is that before he has a chance to talk about emails, Hillary Clinton, Obama, or anything of the sort, that he ends up mysteriously dead in a jail cell somewhere on his way in transport, or certainly before he makes it to any testimony like that. I'm heavily praying against that, by the way. And I don't, honestly, I, there's a big part of me that doesn't believe that's going to happen because those very same parties that are, well, the ones taking him into custody, in truth, are, it's because they've actually made him into a, into a folk hero. And this is an incredibly talented man. If you look at his index of past releases from the WikiLeaks, <clears throat> you're looking at somebody that's very meticulous, has databased a lot of dirt on a lot of people that were doing very dirty things. So the main arguments, well, this is what I really think is occurring, if you just want to know the truth is that all of this is gonna backfire like you wouldn't believe. They keep trying to arrest people that are close to Trump. This would have included earlier, a number of months back, Roger Stone, who of course is not only a visor to, or was a, a visor, officially speaking, to Donald Trump. The news articles will read that he's an ex-visor or what have you, but the truth is that these two have, <laughs> they're friends. They're, they're literally friends. They're attacking friends of the president and not on any good cause either, to be spiteful or mean. Their actual allegations are that they're all involved with Russia to have released emails <laughs> that damaged Hillary Clinton. What they're going to end up doing in the course of this is actually, of course, going through those emails. So when they list in their documentation, individual one, individual two, and by the way, some of those individuals listed in those documents are when they're individual one or individual two, or they're referring to as Alex Jones. They're giving the Alex Jones, Roger Stone, Julian Assange, all of the people that had the best evidence against them or quite, a, quite an impressive list of them, are the very people that they're shoving into the spotlight, which is actually what they're doing. Now, in the course of this same week also, or thereabouts, you had the deposition tapes of Alex Jones that came out. I, I found, I actually watched the entire three hours of these, and I found them to be incredibly embarrassing I, for, the, for the plaintiff attorneys. I, and a thought that kept resting on my mind is the people making these families into victims are those attorneys that act arrogant, they act whiny, they act snooty, they act snide, they, all of these things. It didn't, the, the deposition did not sound, it sounded like some teenagers doing it. And which here again is insulting to those families of Sandy Hook. And the reporting, I, I went back through and tried to find clips where Alex was talking about Sandy Hook. And, I, you know, you can argue this report was not totally accurate. That report was totally accurate with with anything. That, I mean, the people arguing that he's inaccurate are, are people like CNN. So I, I guess if they're arguing that Alex is a liar or these other kind of things, I, I guess what they're really stating is he's not sufficient of a liar to to get a job with them, maybe. But the likes to dislikes on those articles, as so we go down the page, thousands and thousands, in some cases, maybe 10,000, I, I don't know, you can go on there and peek. People that were in support of, of, of Alex Jones and against these news agencies. And most of that footage would be Megyn Kelly footage, who I actually used to really like. She did the Kelly Files, and she did neat shows. She even did shows on the occult and haunted houses. If that doesn't come off as, uh, uh, as a kooky thing to report on, I have no idea what would. And you, can, you certainly can't argue that's inaccurate. And you could argue that that had damaged someone by stating that their house was haunted. Well, Megan, you could have dropped their home values. The real thing here, as best I can tell, is that during the presidential campaign, or the debates of Donald Trump, when he was becoming the forerunner, and Megyn Kelly had the opportunity to ask him some questions, she thought she was gonna punch him in the gut with a statement about, uh, 
about things that he had said about women, which of course with Donald Trump is no, I mean, this is a guy that, uh, you know, he's he, you found a rich guy that likes pretty girls and makes some guy-like comments. So you've discovered a guy that was being a guy. That's what you discovered. Well, she was gonna hit him in the gut with this, and of course this backfired on her so badly that she was embarrassed and ashamed. Then she went and made more of a fool of herself after she came back from a few day hiatus or whatever, made a few little comments on, on Fox News that weren't terribly flattering about it. Then she went up to Trump Towers and embarrassed herself further after she had already embarrassed herself. And as opposed to, t to handling any of this like a professional, what she really thought she was gonna do was switch sides, presumably for bags full of money, and, um, and badmouth all her friends. And this backfired on her. And the intros to the shows where she's vilifying people and she's, you know, in this case, Alex, oh, I can't believe what a villain that he would have been that he talked about a mass shooting in a school. I talked about thousands of things, Megan. And you know good and well that if you were working at Fox News, you wouldn't be talking about any of this. And you also know that this was somebody that was championing a lot of things in this nation that are very good. He was championing against people taking your guns away. He was championing against abortion. He was championing all sorts of things that are actually probably in truth the root cause of the, uh, of the lawsuits. I did find it fascinating during those depositions where Alex is looking over at the, um, the attorneys and saying, no, you guys are hardcore Democrats, correct? <laughs> and they're using edited clips, which of course, my, you know, I'm, I'm a video editor myself. I've done video for 10 years now, and I know that when you put a collection of clips together of somebody stating something that you want, it's, in fact, I, I myself don't, when I got started doing video, I would do that kind of thing a lot. And it actually wore on my heart because you don't do that. You don't take slivers of something, put them all together, and then paint a picture of someone. Uh, you, you do, you put things, if you're gonna be fair and honest with anything, you, you do your best to keep things in context. They didn't do that, they didn't do that, and I hope that that does cost them an any legal thing. What I speculate will happen is that no matter what, well, I hope against this, but, there's a lot of pressure to get convictions on these people. And even when they do, or if they do, an Alex's issue, an Assange's issue, I don't think they're getting anything on Roger because there's prophecies from Kim Clement that are concerning Roger Stone. Kim Clement was, in, in my view, a prophetic voice of your of your age. He did thousands of prophecies. He prophesied 9-11 that had him working with the FBI. So as kooky as prophecy might sound to someone listening to this, uh, the FBI didn't find it kooky. They sat down with Kim Clement quite a lot. Quite a lot. Uh, and they called it Operation Stargate or something like that. But they would go sit down with him. This is after he prophesied 9-11. He prophesied the election of George Bush, prophesied the election of Barack Obama. And of course, he's most well known for back in 2007, uh, 2007, stating a lot of things about Trump and prophesying that Trump, Donald Trump, would in fact be a president of the United States and that he would be a praying president and I found that even Donald Trump's enemies I was watching documentaries where they were trying to badmouth him and this one guy is laughing <laughs> you can't believe what this SOB did before we went in to go through this powerful thing he actually sat down and prayed <laughs> and they're saying it and I'm listening to it and I'm like you know that's exactly the kind of man that I want in there somebody that when he's going into a hard situation the last thing he does before go over is say, Lord, guide me and whatever's about to happen. But of course, to them, this was fun. And I, and, I, and, and I bring that up for this cause, that the very things they believe are their strong evidence are the very things that are going to convict their own hands. And this is in the Julian Assange case. And if he dies, you'll have made him a martyr. And I'm sure all the documentation that he's got on all of these people will be millions of times more valuable if he were to turn up dead in a jail cell than if he were to go to trial. And in the course of saying, who did who gave the emails over? Who cares who gave them over? Who absolutely cares who gave them over? 
The point of all of those emails, all of those documents, is that these people were lying to you. They were stealing from your families. They were even in just the samples of stuff that we had prior to the first Don, Donald Trump presidential uh, election. And watching that, I, I was one of the people going through those emails, and I couldn't. I mean, there, there were thousands, maybe tens. There were so many you couldn't even pour through them. And I would just, each one, you would pick up some of them were worse than the other one. I tried to go with the worst ones and, and sort of show you, here's, you know, but there were so many worst ones. This ain't like editing together an Alex Jones clip where he's covering a news story about a, you know, a school shooting. And by the way, a lot of that stuff was pressured, influenced. I don't know about the Sandy Hook one or whatever, but there's, you know, the way that we're raising our kids not to respect each other. The way that we're raising people in general in this play. Well, children, let's start with children. We've got the Planned Parenthood people. This was somebody that Alex would, would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with. Everybody I've seen go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Planned Parenthood, they end up with felonies. They end up with charges. They end up with all sorts of stuff. No matter what, they're, no matter if they're coming out and saying, we've got video of these people buying baby parts. Well, buddy, the felony's on you when it's against Planned Parenthood. This is not a trite entity. And I don't know why the Democrats are so rock solid on funding it. I mean, I, even if you loved, even if you, you're like, dude, I love murdering babies. Why would you fund it? And I don't know they don't call it that. It's a medical thing. Well, even if you support abortion, why would you fund it in the billions and billions and billions of dollars? That's annually if you're a Democrat. Why not put that in your own pockets or to something that's useful to you? They're not even giving you the free abortion anyway. And then there's the argument, well, they come into the schools and they explain to the kids how to use condoms. Look, man, if your kid cannot figure out how to put on a condom or read the directions on the condom box, your kid has got bigger problems than figuring out how to read the directions on the back of a condom box. As opposed to showing our kids how to put on condoms and how to quickly get an abortion, if they, uh, uh, you know, once they've run out loose and disrespected each other, why not teach the men to respect the women? Why not treat the wet, teach the women how to respect themselves? Spend some of that money on that. I bet you that would cut down on your school shootings. I bet that would cut down on your bullying and all these other things that the liberal that are that are hardcore that I tend to agree with the hardcore even the far left Democrats on be nice if these things weren't happening but the solution isn't to take the guns away no no no. I think part of the solution actually would be to tr to teach people as little children right in those schools as opposed to giving it to people that hey let me show you how to call them going on because you can't read the instructions on the back of the box and do you also believe I mean do I need a billion dollar agency that I'm never going to go visit? Do you think that I can't find the condom section at the local convenience store? And that I, if I don't have five bucks in my wallet to buy a box of condoms, I've got no business reading the directions to figure out how to put the thing on. No, sir. Treating, te teaching your kids how to respect each other and getting some lawyers together to sound like snooty dudes that are, in fact, probably hardcore liberal. To sit in there and sue somebody, they're the ones making the, in my view, they're the ones making the families a victim. More and over and over and over and over again. Any discourse that you hear from somebody like Alex Jones is way after the fact on it. But back to their Mueller investigation and all their Russia stuff, which we really know is solid, right? Because Donald Trump is definitely, I mean, the whole point of this election was so he could become a Russian and flip on all of us. No, they're mad. They're mad and they're behaving desperately. And that's why it's backfiring. That's why it backfired in their Kavanaugh stuff when they had a lady in there falsely accusing him of rape and other things. Why isn't that lady in jail for all of that? Oh, because she got her liberal friends to coach her on how to come that close to perjury but not cross the line? No, no. The rules should not be structured to reward what I view as demonic stuff. The same kind of stuff, by the way, that Megyn Kelly used to cover on her show when she's talking about haunted houses and stuff. And nobody filed one lawsuit on that dropped our property value. Which you should have if you've got police reports that sound kooky to me. 
hey man we got stuff banging on walls things floating through things faces looking through windows that shouldn't be there I found that stuff fascinating those were fun shows that was back when that lady was doing something fun interesting and entertaining to watch no matter what you believed the reason why her numbers CNN's numbers all of these things plummet like rocks and the reason why the Mueller report and all of this other crap on Russia is going to drop right out from underneath their feet and backfire is because the God of the universe is in control of this just like those kooky prophecies from Kim Clement that seem to come true and come to, true to a degree that even the FBI is dating what do you have to say next man died three weeks after Trump became president Lord took him the front runner for the Democrat Party at president is Bernie Sanders if that doesn't and I actually like this crazy boy he's wilder than a firecracker in um, I don't know if he'll be the Democratic nominee or not, but it'll sure be fun if he is, because he is a crazy old coot, but I, I enjoy watching him, and I think that if he is, you'll get to look at Democrat and Republican. Well, it's not even real Democrat. This isn't Kennedy. This is nonsense. And this is people actually fighting in the Democrat Party against the blacks, against the Spanish, against everybody. But some groups historically more than others. And that'd be the very groups that they're kissing up to most. And here's a lollipop. Please believe more of our lives. The argument of is it real? Is the place you're in? Do you, when you step out of this place, do you walk into another dimension? And you're going to go on a ride. A ride unlike buy the ticket, take the ride. There's just no ride like it on all earth. And that's, by the way, what I asked the Lord for when I set into, I didn't even know what the title of this was going to be until I was done with it. I said, Lord, it was the most joy that I ever had, really, in truth, putting together one of these videos. I, I just would say, Lord, lead me through this day. Show me stuff that, and he would, he would. I mean, it's like the whole thing, like just what you watched, except actually what you just watched is just a taste of what there is when you, it was like he would show me the next big thing and you would say, well, surely it can't get better than that. And then boom, it would get better than that. You say, oh, surely that's got to be the end. Boom, it would get better than that all the way. All the, you're going to love this. There's nothing and the way that it ends the way that it ends. I would be robbing you to tell you. If there were nothing else that you ever got, you never got anything from God in a nutshell, at least with what we've got today, the one thing that I would want you to have for it to be yours, your copy, tangible, tangible thing in your hand. Here's what it looks like on the inside. One thing that was yours from God in a nutshell, it would be this disc right here. I'm Trey Smith. Thank you for watching The God Dimension. Available at GodDinutshell.com. And God bless every last one of you and your families. A covering. I'm praying for revival. Revival in such a way that the generations that have passed would be jealous. Not just in this land, but in all lands. I'm Trey Smith. God bless every last one of you on the other side of the screen. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Tell me that's, tell me that's not pretty.
I had always planned for years to do the Exodus in a way that there would be nothing like it on Earth. I never quite planned anything like this. Because I wanted one more thing when I thought about the Exodus. One more thing that I wanted. Because to do an Exodus and to do it right, you need... What do you need for an Exodus? Well, baby, you need the waters to part. I'm Trey Smith of God in a nutshell. More than that, I'm a servant. I'm a servant of the King. King of kings, the king of glory. God says, out of Egypt did I call my son. It was out of Egypt, this land where I stand, where he called his people. The place of the pharaohs. And I'll give you one more hint of the pharaoh of the Exodus was. As I make this corner right here, I'm going to point you to a real big clue standing right behind me up there. You know what those obelisks represent?